Hi, Nick Collier here, and this is my shop. Come join me. We'll have some fun. Well, good morning. Nick Collier here, and uh, we're, uh, we're going to move forward with this project, uh, building the uh, motorized for the roller. And uh, yesterday we left off getting ready to cut this little red uh, uh, box here, and uh, we're going to cut that and... Let's just go over there on the saw and see what we can do. Okay, because this saw is going to cut at an angle, I have to just come down to this point here and then come down to this point here and then flip this thing around somehow and, and cut the back sides. But we can cut the front side uh, on a big saw and that will make it a little easier. Okay, so uh, we, we've cut these two sides. Now we need to come back and cut these just these two little segments right here. And I think we can do this on the uh, smaller bandsaw that uh, gives us the ability to raise the head all the way up to vertical. Let's take it over there and see what we can come up with. All right, let's give this a try. You can see from there though. Let's get you up a little higher. And then down. And that might work better. All right, let's give the chisel thing a try and see how much uh, noise we're going to make. Not too bad. Well, we get that sucker cut all the way down. Let's see if we can hang it off the edge here. Let's do the other side. And then we'll figure out the next step. Well, hell, I'd say we're almost cut all the, way, all the way through here. I mean, it goes down to the last little nib there. We just have to find a way of uh, separating that. So we'll be back. All right, we're going to give this a try. Just kind of try to bust through using the 
and, or the vise as a kind of an open space below there so it has a chance to bend. Let's see what we can do with that. I don't think so. All right, let's try this other direction here. Yeah, that might work. There it goes. Nice. That's a substantial chunk of metal there. Probably uh, eight or six gauge. So I'll know what we need to do now is just kind of come in and clean up those edges. I'm thinking maybe even just a file. But for now, we get to try it out and see if it's actually going to work. Okay, let's just have a look. Drop the big wheel in. And uh, it looks like I didn't cut it quite far enough down. Other than that, it sits pretty nicely. So I'd say, oh, another half inch. And I think this last half inch, we will use... Uh, the chop saw grinder will just kind of come in and chop out that piece but we can't do it just yet because it's fairly early in the morning and I want to give my neighbors a break so we'll put that aside for now and we've got other projects to work on we'll be back okay, in a well, few the next thing we have to do and I'm sure we've got a true hole here but it's an old hole and um, I'm not real um, Although, I don't know, it looks pretty, nah, it's kind of banged up. So I think what we're going to do is just come back in and true up this hole and make it so that, uh, so that it's concentric with the, with the outer wheel and everything flows nice and smoothly. So, um, uh, and this is uh, 18 inches and I have a 16 inch bed with a gap. So we're going to have to pull the gap and see what we can come up with here. And our gap pulls with uh, four big Allen bolts, but they are filled with chips. So we need to dig those out. Yeah, let's just get the air going. We'll be back.
And it turns out that my lathe comes with two gaps. This one here and this back one here, just in case you need to get back in with the faceplate. But right now I don't think we're going to do faceplate work. So we're just going to take this gap, break it loose. Get it out of the way. Let's clean off a bunch of this crap under here. Okay. And now we can put this in here. I'm not expecting it to uh, to be perfect. I'm just wondering if it's going to do anything at all. It looks like it could. So we're going to turn the jaws around and see if we can uh, get the uh, get it to uh, square up. The odds are against it, of course, because of course we're dealing with a three-jaw chuck instead of a four-jaw. But those legs are. There's six legs, which means we're going to be working with three jaws. But at the same time, we may end up going to the faceplate, and that's just the way it goes. Oops. Let's tighten it up. That'd be a good idea, huh? Still not tight. Yeah, I think we're going to have to go to uh, to the faceplate. Okay, well, I tried as many combinations as possible to keep from putting this faceplate on. I mean, there's nothing wrong with the faceplate. It's just a pain in the ass. Uh, easier to clamp down a couple of uh, um, jaws rather than hook up a bunch of clamps and everything like that. But we are going to be hooking up clamps. And the problem is, is that this thing sits... Oh, three quarters of an inch away from the uh, the faceplate because of the uh, the boss. Now, actually, this might be the better side here. Okay, half an inch away from the faceplate. So uh, what I've come up with is uh, I've got some pretty honking tool bits here, and I'm going to slide a tool bit behind this the the uh, gears. And then clamp them, and we'll see. We'll be set. But first, before I do that, we need to get this thing to center out someplace close so that we can uh, get everything clamped up and then make our adjustments. So the way I like to do that is just bring my carriage back, or cross light back. Bring everything as far forward as I can come which isn't very far with this, uh, with this, um, the gaps out. Let's go ahead and clean off this here. And then re-oil it because it's always needing that. Bring that in as far as I can bring it in. 
which is about there. We'll take that out for the moment. We'll put my little mini extension in here. There it is. We'll put the adapter in. No, not that adapter. I know I've got one here. Where's it at? Oh, there it is. That goes in there. We get a, a bell center that I made up here a while back. Hey, I want to show you this other bell center I got. It's pretty wild. How about this one? That one, not too bad, huh? Uh, why they put it on a number two uh, taper, I don't know, but they did. And, uh, and that's okay, because I've got a bit of an adapter there. But this could come up all the way to, what, six inches. And I'm telling you, somebody spent some time on that one. Okay, so... Let's spin this over until we get it close enough. And then bring that in and bottom that sucker out. Let's get my finger out of the way. Oops, hang on, hang on. That's not good. What happened? Oh, I see. We're sitting just slightly askew of that hole. That's probably good, at least just to get everything locked in place. So let me go get some clamps and uh, we'll go from there. And, uh, you know, this faceplate came with the lathe. Somebody, somebody spent some real time on building this thing. I am so glad to have it because it's pretty universal. It'll handle almost anything. And if you watched uh, my other series, uh, what was that, Sewer Slinger, at one point I had, you know, some... 60 or 80 pound pieces of steel out here spinning around and that was pretty uh, pretty wild Let's see what are we going to use to clamp this Okay We'll just come in I think a probably a small clamp would do well Okay, we got our indicator set up. We're looking like we're, oh, probably 60, 70 thousandths out. And which way are we out here? There is one direction, and that is going to be um, too close. So what we need to do is bring it back a bit. And I'm going to go get a um, rubber mallet.
Okay, we're set, we're centered. Uh, all we need to do now is just bore it and we're set to go. Well, okay, the battery died on me. I don't know where it died, but we bored that baby out. We got that all set up, and then I came back and surfaced this uh, this uh, one section here that's going to uh, butt up against the boss. And as far as I can tell, that's pretty much what we need to do to get this back to what we want. Well, I think we got to come in to, and buff out those gears a little bit, but that will be... Uh, Something we just do with a wire wheel or something like that. So I think it's time to take this thing apart and uh, let's see what we got. Okay, we've got our surface cut. We've got our um, hole cut. And uh, my one piece of tool stock is uh, a little too small. Oh, well. Um, but. I'm, you know, and I always like to kind of work with the stuff I have laying around. Uh, certainly this wheel is a uh, case, the um, case in point. Um, and I kind of scrounged around and scrounged around and I found this big old honking piece of steel. I mean, I hate to, to turn it down, but that's what it's for. And it is 8620, which is pretty good material for doing what I'm wanting to do here. So we're going to turn this down to press into there and then we're going to turn the rest of the shaft down to this size here and then somewhere in the middle here we're going to put a keyway or I'm sorry a, a half moon key and uh, and then this end yeah that's it right this is the drive in so um so I think that's going to happen Anyhow, next. Anyhow, each of us has about five acres or so. And uh, so these folks moved in right behind me. And Barbara and I kind of want to go over and say hi to them. You know, hey, nice neighborly thing. Uh, so for about the next hour, we're probably going to be doing other stuff. I'm going to go actually put some clean clothes on. <laughs> that's unheard of. So, uh, oh, hey, I want to show you one other thing. Hang on. Now, maybe many of you know, uh, but if you don't, there's a video about the little wood stoves that I make. Not this design, but more like a 55-gallon drum in the 5-gallon size design. Uh, but this is my latest design for a wood stove. And I'm kind of, I'm kind of happy about it. And although for me the door is a little bit big, so I'm going to be getting some smaller material, uh, and uh, and I think that's going to work great. And it's an old propane tank, so and the propane tank has a really wonderful lines to it. So and very solid material instead of that kind of tinny uh, five-gallon drum stuff. So uh, you know. Keep an eye out. Uh, I'm probably, once I kind of get a, all the angles resolved and everything resolved, I'll go ahead and put this up on the on YouTube uh, as a offering also. For now, this is Nick Collier signing out.